Weekly Mining News. Welcome to Australian Mining for New Starters. And as usual, we'll do the week's news, we'll talk about the commodity prices, and then we'll have a chat about where the new starter jobs are. So the big news in mining this week, of course, is diggers and dealers. And finally, the media has got the memo about gold and there being a new gold boom on the horizon or happening at the moment. And that's what most of diggers and dealers was about. All the exploration that's going on and all the new pits and underground workings that they're um, firing. Up. The other thing that happened at Diggers and Dealers, and this is for the new starters on the page, and again this is new start, news for new starters, is Fortescue's chief executive went there and made an announcement. What they're doing is they've actually gone along with the other big two, Rio and BHP, and they have committed 100% to turn all their iron ore mines autonomous. Now, what does that mean? For a new starter, that means if you're signing up at the moment, you can forget about the $150,000 a year truck driving job. What you're really signing up for now is an $80,000 a year job in Perth. It's all 100% about reducing wage costs. So if you're a new starter and trying to get into the industry, this is one of the reasons why I tell people that they've got rocks in their heads if they're trying to get into iron ore as an operator. It's different if you're trying to get in as a fitter or you're going in as a senior, an engineer or senior person but if you're actually going in as an operator somebody that wants to work on the mine it's not where the jobs are they're trying to turn all their mines autonomous they will be able to do it because some of the minings or most of the mines that they work on are all strip mines and they're the easiest mines to work they're able to run autonomous trucks it's one of those things that this is what's happened with the industry in iron ore if you're in it Yes, you're on your $150,000 a year, but if you're trying to get into it or a, and you're just starting, the chances of you making the $150,000 a year as an operator are very minimal. Like I said, you'll end up back in Perth probably on around between seventy dollars and $80,000 a year working in one of their offices in town. And there's already a number of people already doing that. None of the big three mining companies are going to pay somebody $150,000 a year to click in a mouse in Perth to run a truck in the Pilbara. That's just not going to happen. So that's why they're doing that. And to um, sort of disguise, I reckon to sort of disguise what she's actually said, because it was a pretty big announcement, she's gone out with this as well, where she's criticised the skimpies at Diggers and Dealers. My philosophy is that if you don't want to... Um, go to a skimpy bar, don't go to a skimpy bar. There's lots of bars in Kalgoorlie that don't have skimpies. There are only a few that do these days. It's not like when I first started in 94, where every pub that you walked into had um, skimpies in it. It's definitely not like that. So I see this as more of a distraction about the announcement that they made about the automation. So that was the big news in Hard Rock. The other big news of the week in coal was BHP confirmed that their Chinese customers are cancelling orders. Now, this is just another thing that's happened over the last week in coal and it's just pointing towards the rationalization that i've already talked about i did a video about the coal industry last week if you haven't seen it have a look at it i really don't want to harp on this because you know it's not good news it means that they're going to shut mines down and people are going to lose their jobs so again as a new starter if you're trying to get into the coal industry my recommendation would be to pivot towards hard rock looking for people all around the country for gold mines copper mines zinc mines lead mines nickel mines that's where you should be looking i understand people have already spent thousands of dollars trying to get into the coal mining industry but unfortunately with everything that's going on it's it is what it is unfortunately so let's have a look at the prices and we'll start with coal and that's pretty steady at 56.95 but you've got to find a customer to sell it iron ore is doing what iron ore has been doing for the last two months is moving sideways again that bazillion supply hasn't come on market which has seen the price remain high but everybody expects that to drop down to $80 a tonne in the next few months. And gold is still trading at that 2600 but or close to 2700 at the moment, but in that band that we've seen for the last few months. And that's why diggers and dealers was going off and everybody's trying to get their gold mines going at the moment. Because at 2682 an ounce, most people are making $1,500 an ounce on their gold that they're finding and processing. If you're a new starter what can you do where you where can you go and have a look so the big areas that i like to point people in are hard rock underground so if you type underground into seek you'll see all the jobs come up 
And like I continually say, all these truck driving jobs, they all want experienced people, but unfortunately there aren't any. So they're all having to take inexperienced people and train them up. So what can you do to make yourself more attractive to the employers is know what you're getting yourself into. And if you want to have a crack at Hard Rock Underground, then I suggest that you have a look at the sponsor's training. So that's Intro to Underground Mining. They're four online courses that teach you everything that you need to know. I'm going to do a video shortly about young people trying to get into mining. But the more you know before you go, the better off you are. Training on a mine site can be a bit hit and miss depending on who you get and how they their, their training methods, if you've got a personality clash with them, just generally how you fit into the scheme of things when you get there. I use the analogy that on most mine sites, the train it's like teaching somebody to swim by throwing them in the water and then trying to explain to them how to swim while they're struggling to swim in the water. That's the way it works, and that's why three out of five people fail in the first six months that try and get into hard rock underground mining. It's the same with exploration. There's a lot of people that try and jump into exploration, and they don't know what they're getting themselves into. Like I keep telling people, you really want to like camping if you're going to go for one of these fieldies or the surface drillers off-sider jobs. They pay well, but they have a high turnover of people and it's legendary especially with the surface drillers offsiders uh, a lot of companies end up sending an extra person out just to take the people back that have quit in the first two or three days or week because they just find it too hard so knowing what you're getting yourself into is a good idea now if you want to, you can have a look at the surface as well if you're in WA because for probably about six months while the borders are going to remain shut, there's a bit of a window where people, where the surface companies for the gold pits and the nickel pits and the copper pits are trying to get uh, experienced people. And then they can't, so McMahon's have offered a dump truck traineeship for the surface. So that's one to have a look at. But once the borders open up, you'll find that a lot of experienced coal operators that have got experience driving the big trucks will make their way to WA and fill these jobs. Because what they're looking for, it doesn't really matter what you're carrying in the back of your truck. All they're looking for is people with experience and know how to drive the truck. You've got a bit of an opportunity if you're in WA now, if you want to try and get into the surface. But once that border opens up, there'll be a flood of experienced people coming across to take these surface jobs. That's one of the reasons why I push people towards the underground side of things. The shortage for underground workers is Australian wide. There's no extra people over one side of the country waiting to get over the, to the other side of the country like on the surface. Uh, they are just straight up out of people and are having to hire new starters everywhere. Uh, they're going it about it in different ways. Some places are doing road shows. Other places are just hiring straight out. But one thing that they're consistently doing is just pouring people through. Like I said, the more you know before you go, the better the chance you've got of making it. So I hope you found that news interesting and if you could like and subscribe the channel and share the information around. Thank you.